All right, it is another second of the month and uh, time to update the portfolio. Uh, the market has been uh, riding really high uh, this past month or two, and uh, so has the portfolio. Uh, this month, it looks like we have uh, two, three, four sales. Uh, a lot of these we've already gone over. Uh, Texas Instruments is uh, the company that we purchased last month, and it's already gone up uh, high enough that it's triggering a, a sale order but uh, we don't plan on selling that um, after only a month gonna hold on to it uh, sunlight financial uh, we've already been through that there's a few options out there for us but uh, sunlight financial seems to be uh, the best one so far it made it all the way up to 40 um, this past month and it's come back down to about 36 but as you see we got it at uh, 32 so I think we're happy with that we may uh, look at it again just in case um, you know XL Energy um, honestly we can uh, sell a little bit of that um, because um, it looks like we're over allocated right now um, we, we actually own too much so um, I may sell some just to take some profit um, and and keep the rest looks like we have 57 shares and we really don't need that many we only need 14 so uh, I think I'll, I'll make that that happen uh, but we'll also look and see uh, what other options are out there maybe we can uh, sell this and, and get into something else uh, we'll see uh, McDonald's um, again on a tear right now um, I'm going to start adding the uh, percentages uh, to these things to show uh, how much they're up by. But McDonald's is up something like uh, maybe 10 percent. So it's all the way up to 128, 129, which is a uh, $10 uh, difference. So it's about 10 percent, 9 percent. Exxon Mobil and uh, and Bell Canadian uh, is it's what's hurting right now, and uh, I'm kind of excited about that. I've been waiting. Uh, for bail to come down as BCE. I've been waiting for it to come down so I can buy more um, I think it's a really uh, good company and uh, their last earnings call um, Was uh, was pretty good um, They talked about losing uh, some uh, internet subscribers and losing some um, uh, landline uh, uh, Clients, but I mean, you know landline is going away anyway what I'm excited about is their their TV offerings. They actually own uh, a TV station, and uh, they're pulling a lot of client customers in uh, into their their satellite uh, TV. No different than what AT and T is is trying to do here in, in the states. Uh, they've already done it there, and they've been working uh, pretty good at it. Their capital expenses are a bit high, but that's because they're trying to reach everyone in the outskirts of Canada. You know, up up north. Uh, in the tundra um, but overall though still I think a good company and the price has come down enough that if I bought it and I get back uh, to the uh, purchase price uh, we'll realize a 3% gain so that's not bad Exxon Mobil though um, looks like it's um, a bit better uh, looks like a 7% gain if I buy down at these levels um, I am a little worried about Exxon Mobil though. Uh they just um took a big hit on their um their oil in the ground. So basically they're proven reserves and what they said was they they changed the numbers on their balance sheet to say, well, you know, instead of maybe a million barrels, you know, we're only going to get, you know, 600,000 barrels or something like that. Uh the exact numbers I don't I don't have in front of me at the moment, but uh, the point is they, they did take a big uh, hit uh, to their reserves, which means the assets are down, which means that uh, possible revenue is down. Um, however, their ex-CEO is a secretary of state now, and um, so that, that bodes well for the company. Uh, oil has been steady at about 50 bucks a barrel, which is good for uh, the smaller the, the smaller companies as well as uh, some of the other countries around the world to uh, produce oil at. So at these prices, uh, you know, there's going to be so much oil coming into the market um, that it's going to keep 
uh, oil prices uh, down or where they are and I really don't see oil going up much more unless we have some issue with uh, you know border tax or something crazy like that um, whether or not that will happen I don't know if it does I'll be happy because that means that uh, maybe uh, US producers um, will, will then have a bigger market share of uh, US um, oil consumption and that should drive the price of oil up which would uh, help out ExxonMobil immensely and then we have repa repa repatriation of uh, of income so we're talking about ExxonMobil which is a global company has you know money um, outside the US and if they're able to bring that cash back to the US um, you know without paying a whole lot of American tax that'll be a great thing um, and then of course you know it's the whole uh, corporate uh, tax rate uh, may decrease um, but that's really neither here nor there because that's gonna affect everyone about the same um, of course there are gonna be some industries that are affected uh, differently but um, for this portfolio I don't really see that big of a difference honestly it's either gonna be good for all of them or you know or not so we'll look at uh, some other um, We'll look at pur purchasing maybe Exxon Mobil, look at purchasing um, British Canadian, and uh, look at possibly selling some of our uh, XL Energy. What I want to take a look at uh, right now is actually the um, last month's performance and uh, which sectors performed the best. And it looks like this is consumer cyclicals here let me make sure because something about that doesn't oh there we go all right have to scroll up a bit all right basic materials up 4.5 percent and a lot of that is due to uh, Nucor which um, has been doing really well I mean it's outperforming the sector uh, by far uh, we're in Weyerhaeuser and um, I can be happy with it you know volatility is low um, dividend is steady uh, it's a big REIT uh, really can't go wrong with that of course you know I don't have the the alpha I'm sure uh, that Nucor has but again um, I can be happy with the volatility and uh, this past month second best performer you know uh, you know second to worst performer overall um, but you know we can be happy with that at the moment all right so let's see uh, consumer cyclicals down and um, that's really nice to see because uh, as you see here McDonald's killed it this past month uh, they are way up looks like five percent over the past month uh, Las Vegas Sands up six percent. That's the one we actually sold out of to get into McDonald's. Las Vegas Sands, that's a good company. Uh, looks like Staples did okay. Everyone else was down. I mean, look at L Brands. My goodness, if that's not a short, I don't know what is. Um, you know, they they don't have an online presence. They really don't. I mean, what are you gonna do with lingerie, right? All right, let's keep going down the list here. Uh, a little too far. All right, just come over just a little bit. There we go. All right. Consumer defensive, uh, 3.85. They've been fairly steady, except for uh, except for December. They've been pretty steady. And uh, you know, I just realized why is why is my average not here? What's going on there? Let's pull this out. I don't like that. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to see about changing that. I kinda like to see that uh that average, but it's okay for now. 
All right, let's go. So consumer defensive uh, looks like second best at the moment. Energy, look at this, 1.5%. Who are my Who are my performers over here in energy? Uh, looks like uh, Chevron, best performer. Um, Exxon Mobil, kind of in the middle there. But um, I think Exxon Mobil's uh, dividends a bit better than than Chevron, and looks like it it outperformed over the past couple months actually. As a sector, though, it's uh you know it is what it is. Oil hasn't really moved much, isn't doing a whole lot. I think everybody's kind of in a wait to see. Uh, but you know, as long as uh, oil stays at fifty bucks a barrel. I think everything will be okay. Um, see, finance. Finance took a, a hit this past month, and uh, that goes right in line with what I saw uh, in um, in um, in Sun Life Financial. Uh, you know, it, it roared up, and then it just came back. Not all the way back, but it came back. So let's take a look at this. Uh, this is Toronto something or other it's like another canadian uh canadian bank td uh looks like uh let me make sure i'm looking at this right uh yeah this is not sorted properly but anyway sun life financial uh best in sector best in sector um aflac outperformed uh this past month i kind of had a feeling that was going to happen uh, based on the P.E. ratio that I saw last month when I was looking at this stuff. Uh, Aflac was just way too cheap. So now I'm kind of curious just for the fun of it of where the P.E. ratio on Aflac is now compared to the rest of the sector. Um, but again, Sunlight Financial um, beats out everyone. Uh, it did take a, a fairly large hit. Honestly, I'm not quite sure why other than the fact that it did uh, jump so high uh, over this past month. Uh, that's something that I'll have to to really look into to figure out what's going on there. All right. Uh, oh my goodness! Look at this. I've been hearing about the health sector and how cheap it's all been, and 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 how it's going to come back at some point. And my goodness, has it ever? It beat. It beat the rest of the market. Look at this. Seven percent. Seven percent. Uh, Pfizer is where we're at, and uh, looks like uh, 8.6, just under uh, Johnson & Johnson. Looks like uh, the best performer in the sector, Johnson & Johnson, of course. Uh, Pfizer, uh, one of the worst, actually. And, um, you know, it, it's um, the story on Pfizer is whether or not they're going to break up, whether or not they're going to take their current... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Their generic drugs and have that be a separate company and have their current uh, drugs that they can actually charge, you know, a whole lot of money for because they're not generic yet. They still hold a patent to them. We're not going to change that into uh, its own company. And, um, you know, there's a lot of debate over which way is better. Of course, you know, the 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 new company that that holds patents to all the drugs that's going to see uh possible uh higher growth rates larger p e uh so the price should uh be a bit better however we have no clue what that means for the dividend and uh and that's kind of why i'm in this thing is for the dividend so um i you know i want to see it stay together honestly um they have a lot of cash on the books. They can go out and they can can buy out someone else if they're really looking for growth. And I'm pretty sure they're they're looking at that. Every time I listen to an earnings call, they get the same question over and over again. What are you guys doing in mergers and acquisitions? What are you guys doing in mergers and acquisitions? And every single time, uh, the guy says, "Well, you know, we're looking. You know, and and when we find the the right deal, we'll take it." And um, you know it really sucks. You know they they tried to merge with uh, with Allergan, and uh, you know White House wouldn't let it go through. So you know they still have the cash, and um, we'll see what they what they do. Um, I know that they're definitely looking for something, 
and um, no matter what happens when they buy it's going to drop the price it's going to drop the price it's just going to happen um, I seriously doubt there's going to be some great deal that they can structure that's going to be uh, immediately uh, accreditive uh, to uh, their earnings and, and, and everything but long term though yeah, it'll be a great thing so we'll see what happens man um, next sector industrial uh, it's not doing a whole lot I hear a lot of talk of uh, you know possibly infrastructure spending really helping out the industrials um, I don't know I don't know um, I'm kind of stuck honestly uh, I should say we are kind of stuck uh, right now in, in GE um, again not the worst performer uh, definitely not the best um, at 1% average a month and it's kind of just moping along it's a really nice dividend so we'll take the dividends why well, I initially got into it in the first place um, but man if I had my choice being paychecks a long time ago and uh, I'm gonna take a look to again at um, the GE position because I truly believe that GE will trigger a sale if it weren't for uh, the additional commission uh, that I've placed on that stock um, and it's just it's an old commission because it's an old stock that I've owned for a long time I got it really cheap but when um, I transferred all this stuff over to the the partnership the investment club um, I had to purchase more shares which meant adding another commission uh, charge onto that particular position and uh, and I think that's really the reason why I can't get a sale trigger on this thing uh, I think I need the price to go up to something like 34 bucks before I get a sale trigger and it's been kind of stuck around at 32 which is five bucks higher than what I bought it for right so I don't know all right um, real estate real estate let's see DLR has been the 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 man in this sector, and uh, once again, uh, it's uh, it's outperforming. Uh, didn't do so well this past month, but blew everyone away the month before. So I think it deserves a rest. Um, the sector as a whole barely at one percent, uh, but again, not the worst performing sector. I have to go up to the top again and take a look. Um, so EQR is where we are um, it is literally um, the second worst performer however because I was able um, to uh, to dollar cost average down I actually uh, have a small gain on that position right now so we're gonna stay on it um, you know real estate is is not one of the favorite sectors right now no one is just pouring money into it um, this DLR uh, deal is uh, is pretty good and uh, it's I think it's gonna stay strong uh, for some time to come but uh, you know we just have to ride it out you know uh, the, the the club has to be invested across all 11 sectors so we have to be in real estate and uh, I think we're okay where we are I really do um, equity uh, residential uh, owns uh, uh, some really good uh, apartment complexes and uh, not not high high um, uh, uh, income real estate but but I would say moderate definitely not cheap for sure um, but you know places like Silicon Valley is kind of leveling off as far as uh, rents um, and New York is really leveling off as far as rents um, the last last earnings call they said that in order to get people in they were having to offer you know free months rent stuff like that uh, but they also reported that uh, they were able to raise rents uh, net across uh, the country so they're doing okay they really are um, I don't see anything happening drastically to take this thing down anytime soon um, employment rate is is high so people are working people need somewhere to live uh, people aren't leaving the big cities they're still there everyone is flocking to the inner city that's kind of where it's at 
and that's why we're in uh, uh, equity uh, residential. Um, something tells me that you know real estate is just not hot right now, but um, depending on what happens with uh, interest rates and what they can structure, um, I think uh, we'll see a, a bit of a, a jump there. But not much, honestly. All right, uh, tech sector. Looks like Microsoft is the sector leader, uh, which, you know, makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, Seagate. This is where we were. Look at that. 17%, 10%. My goodness. Hewlett Packard, 17% in March. It's crazy numbers. 2.38% for the for the entire sector. Uh not the best but doing okay. Uh so right now we are actually in Texas Instruments. Uh third best performer in the sector is actually up 3% in March. And again, you know, we have a sell trigger on this thing. But I'm not I'm not ready to to move out of it. Um I may look again at Microsoft honestly um, to see kind of where we are with that uh, versus Texas Instruments but last month when I looked at this thing Texas Instruments uh, really just kind of uh, blew it out of the water because Microsoft is up so high I mean it's just it's really expensive right now you know if it came back down some then maybe we can get a piece but for right now all right telecom Telecom is a is a weird thing right now. I mean, in the U.S., you have Verizon, AT and T, Sprint, T-Mobile, really going at it. I mean, they really are. I got a text message uh, the other day said that I can add another line to my account for free. I'm like, you know, T-Mobile already have four lines. <laughs> Just like, you know, I have four lines and I'm paying like maybe what uh, thirty bucks a piece. 35 35 bucks a piece and you're gonna give me a free line i don't i don't i don't need any more lines but if you're gonna give me one for free maybe i'll take it right it's crazy um so i'm I'm happy with the fact that we're we're, we're out of the u.s you know we're not part of of that war that's going on um but at the same time again uh no different than, than real estate the sector itself is just not a favorite right now you know, uh, there's no money really coming into this thing, um, but we're in a decent position uh, with with Bell Canada. Uh, looks like it is, uh, you know, third best performer. So, you know, not not great, but um, not bad either, right? Um, decent dividend, a bit more alpha than what uh, AT and T was giving us, which is where we were before we moved into Bell Canada. Um, and as you see in March, you know, it came way back. It came way back. So I see this as a good thing. I see this as a buying opportunity, you know. Um, Bell Canada has no reason for the price to really drop. Based on the earnings call, based on the numbers, um, there's no reason for it. You know, obviously, um, it's just losing ground as part of the sector. You know, it's part of the telecom sector and the entire sector. Uh, is losing a lot of because what's happening in the U.S. So I think uh, once the smoke clears, the numbers will again show themselves and Bell Canada will once again uh, rise to the top. All right, utilities. Utilities have been doing surprisingly well. And uh, honestly, I don't know why. The only thing I can imagine is that uh, people are a little scared. And so they're running to uh, a safety bet uh, which is a utility because you know utilities are are regulated so they have to get paid and we know exactly what their profit is going to be and um, I think we're in a really good position with Excel again you know we have the option of, of getting out and going into something else uh, maybe just taking some profits um, so I will look at, 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 at what our options are there but uh, I really like it, man, and, and it's, it's, you know, outperformed everyone this past month. Uh, Excel Energy um, are really uh, at the leading edge uh, for renewable energy, and they are the largest utility provider in the United States, and, uh, and they are really big on wind energy, solar energy. Uh, they are really 
doing their best to become coal free. Um, I think they said something like by 2018 or by 2020, uh, only I think uh, 60% of their um, energy is going to be produced by coal. I mean, they're 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 really uh, they're really uh, doing their thing, and and I like that from a moral standpoint, but also I think that that's kind of where uh, the political climate is going. You know, uh, you have a lot of people screaming about climate change and carbon tax and and this and that and these guys are really trying to get out in front of it uh, a lot of this started with uh, the Obama administration uh, and so um, they're they're really uh, doing their best there now with this new administration um, you know there may be some cutbacks on some of the credits and things like that that uh, they've been able to take advantage of and uh, that's not a great thing but um, Again, largest utility provider in the U.S., so I figure if nothing else, they will rise and fall with the tide of the rest of the utility sector, right? Um, and again, I don't think you can go wrong with a company uh, that is really uh, trying to do their best uh, to uh, use as much renewable energy as possible. So as a sector, uh, 371 and so I'm kind of curious now to see how all these numbers stack up against each other. We got 371. I think telecom performed the worst. Everything is about 2% except for healthcare. Oh, no. Finance. Finance performed the worst. And I think that's just because people are taking profits. Uh, let's see. This is consumer cyclical. Yeah. What took them down, I wonder? I wonder if it's like one particular company that really brought them down. Looks like it was. Yeah, L Brands. L Brands brought them way down. I bet you if I if I took L Brands out this equation, uh, they'll be close to positive. Close. Maybe not quite, but close. Alright, and then uh four or five for basic. And that's all due to Nucor. Alright, so Let's uh let's take a look at let's take a look at uh, our portfolio, see what's performing the best right now, and then from there go and look at um what uh what options we have for Excel in the in the utility sector. So let's just start from the front, go to the back, looking for the largest return. Twelve. I know twenty four is around here somewhere. Eight. There we go. There's twenty four. There's another fourteen. Twenty. Another fourteen. Man, you know, it may be a good idea to look at the worst performing portfolio too. Maybe stay away from that one. That might be able to tell us kind of what's going on in the market right now my goodness this thing again you know I'll be very honest with you I, I don't like looking at this thing beta return standard deviation uh, you know what that simply means is it performs the best when the market is down but it also has the best return and it also has the lowest volatility it, it really is like a, a dead pool of of mutants I mean that's the best of everything um, and and it, it, it the portfolio performs really well I mean this is over the past years what I've done here uh, this was the the cash value of the portfolio March 2015 cash value of the portfolio March 2017 I say 15 2016 to 17 um, you know there's your volatility there, 3.4. On average, this thing is putting out 1% a month. Um, and see, this is interesting. See, this thing, so standard deviation here is 3%, right? 
standard deviation here is 2%, but the average is much higher. Why then is this number lower? Why is this number lower? Ah, that's why. Ah, okay. Well, you get to see how everything works as I go. So what I did earlier was uh, I moved everything back to just show me uh, for the year. And I just forgot to change that one. All right, here we go. Now let's see. See? More like it. Okay, so it's only 5%. So let's go back through this thing. All right, so we got 20 uh, 20, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, another 20, there's a lot of 20s, 21, that's probably the highest right now, 12, 19, all these portfolio, portfolios that's returning 20% over the past year, I wonder if they're all similar. Up oh, 22, my goodness. All right, 11. All right, here we go. See, when it's only two things, I can be a bit more exact as to what's going on. All right, here we go. See, not even two things, one thing, down moves. What this simply means is, is when there's a lot of volatility, when there's a lot of money when there's a lot of activity happening with these uh, with this uh, portfolio um, the price performs better okay and so what that means is is that when there's a lot of activity it tends to not move down as much as other portfolios it's the best way I can put it um, it's just it's the opposite of of um, see if I can find it real quick because I'm kind of curious as to see what what okay see all right so when there's a lot of activity with this portfolio when there's a lot of money coming into it when there's a lot of trades happening uh, these stocks tend to perform well the price tends to move up okay versus this thing where when there's a lot of activity uh, going on these stocks tend to not perform bad <laughs> that's the best way I can explain it it's the opposite of the up though um, but my goodness this thing is a monster look at this man 2% 2% 3% that's crazy this is an average for the year 2% a month and look at the volatility 2.8 that means this thing is just steadily climbing steadily climbing all right so we have to see we got to see what what these uh what this portfolio is okay so that's bn1 and you'll come over here and find it real fast all right here we go and well we're in wirehouser uh best buy don't like best buy dlr well of course dlr uh, Intel, Merck, Marathon, Tullis, Walmart, uh oh, Sun Life Financial, Caterpillar, and XL Energy. All right. So, I mean, th does that not seal the deal for XL Energy? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to go back and, and look and see uh, some of the other uh, p performers, honestly. But, um, Caterpillar, um, yeah, that thing has been the doghouse, and I think it's been just clawing itself back. It's been doing really well. Let me see if I have the dividend percentages here. Uh, tell us, look at this thing, four percent. I have to admit, that's that's nice. Uh, Marathon Oil, that thing I think has gone up so much. Either that, or they cut the dividend, which is not always fun. Uh, Best Buy is fairly small. DLR is decent. Intel compared to uh, Texas Instruments, kind of small. Um, 
Merc. Uh, I have to look at that one. But I, I can't do anything with that anyway right now. Uh, Marathon. Can't do anything there anyway. Can't do anything there. Walmart. Um, Walmart is defensive. We're in Coca-Cola right now. Kind of stuck there where we are. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I can be happy with that. Sunlight Financial, Wirehauser. I'll take another look at Intel. How about that? I'll take another look at Intel. All right. So let's let's go back and let's see um, what the other performers uh, have done. Uh, I think I missed it. Where was it? Looking for 21. It's 2090. It's close. Uh, yeah, I didn't go far enough. So 2090, see that? Dividend and down, see? So that's the down move married with the best dividend. So of course it's performing as well as the, the down moves. All right, let's find the other big one. 1953, what is this one? Beta and down moves my goodness that seems to be the ticket uh my 21.68 return and down moves i mean that's that's obviously so alpha and down god that that's crazy that is crazy Now, see, this one is down moves married with standard deviation. And uh, as you can see, that one, you know, does okay, but um, has performed very well. And a lot of the reason why is because the standard deviation is so low. I mean, there's, there's so little volatility that it doesn't move very much uh, when the market is moving up. Um, duh, duh, duh. Again. Dividend, beta, down 20%. Now, keep in mind that, uh, my goodness, another beta return it down. Keep in mind that I do not uh, reorganize any of this stuff until June. So when June comes around, um, I will update the price list and we will actually have uh, new numbers uh, for things like the down move and standard deviation things of that nature so um, as of right now though that that seems to be uh, what it, it has performed the best all right so let's look at utilities here now again this is only for the past year I believe March to March did I get this thing March to March let's double check yeah uh, no, actually, going, huh, what should be, oh, that's what's going on, duh, all right, March to March, all right, we don't have to do anything with the numbers on this one, okay, looking for these bright greens right here we're just gonna count these things out I haven't figured out um, a way to program this thing yet to, to count for me um, but eventually I'm gonna have to figure out something because manually counting this stuff is not fun all right one two three Four, five, five. So I'll tell you a lot of the reason why I even got into uh, Excel is because of this chart. Um, at the time, uh, Excel, uh, you know, was one of the best performers um, in the sector. And um, that's that's how we got into it. So let's see if that still holds up. All right. So Excel, we got five. I saw DTE a couple times in here. So let's count that one out. 
you got one DTE uh, uh, huh wasn't here as many times as I thought yeah just two just twice ETR I think was uh let's see one two Three, yeah, that's it. So, uh, again, XL Energy best performance portfolio, best performer uh, in the portfolios. And as far as the score, uh, let's take a look and see. I don't think it scores um, the top of the sector. I don't believe so. Let's just take a look and see here. Utility. All right. Yeah. No. It's it's second best. Uh, Southern is uh, first. Uh, let's see by how much. Uh, 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 where's my score? There we go. And eh, not by much two points so it's doing well and see where is ETR ETR is wow ETR is way down here as far as score goes anyway it doesn't score well at all so um, I think we're good with uh, with Excel I mean, our our other option is Southern, right? Just based on score, but uh, Southern uh, has not uh, performed well at all. I don't see it anywhere on any of the charts. I mean, it's almost invisible. Um, the dividend is the best in the... Uh-oh. Uh One of the best. Uh, this thing is starting to freeze on me. It's one of the best, anyway, in the sector. Alright. Uh, return. Nah, not good. Volatility. Yeah, it's really low volatility, so it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, cap cost is zero. Well, it's really, really small. Look at Excel's beta. It's killing it, man. Now, the question is, what score is this thing set up for? That's the question. And I believe that right now, I believe it's, um, I believe it's beta and standard deviation, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's how all this stuff is being scored right now. Yeah. Yeah beta and volatility and as we know the the down portfolio is, is actually performing the best so what will happen is uh, in June we'll run all the numbers again and if down is actually the best performing portfolio for the past year then we'll start scoring uh, stocks uh, for uh, the down um, and whatever stock is best um, scored for a down move will will we'll come to the top let's just see what that looks like really quick I'm just curious let's get rid of that let's do a hundred percent score this thing all right and so looking at Wirehauser looking at uh McDonald's. Uh, let me double check this. Where's my score? There we go. Uh, yeah, no, it's working. No, it's not. There we go. Is that going to work?
work for me. I think I have to use my sort versus the, the filter. Mm. Nah, that worked for me. Okay. So let's see here. So Wirehouser first. Best Buy. Uh, Target. CQP. I don't even know who that is. But again, they're, you know, they score really well, but they don't show up on any of the tables. Uh, it's almost way down there. Sunlight Financial, Merck, Pfizer is second in scoring, so that's good. Dividend is higher, too. Uh, Caterpillar, DE, Paychecks is way down on the list. Um, for scoring that way DLR of course it's uh, first it's like Intel first uh, telecom actually AT&T and CTL is over Bell Canada and Excel is the best utility so there you go so we'll see what's up so that's what we're gonna have happen. Um, the other thing is uh, whether or not we're going to buy more Exxon Mobil or buy more Bell Canadian. And just based on the numbers alone, uh, it appears uh, that uh, we need more Exxon Mobil because I have a. Oh, no, no, no. I was looking at the wrong number. My goodness. This is the number I'm supposed to look at. So, ExxonMobil is 1% if I buy it now. Bell Canada is 2.7 if I buy it now. So, that's that's where we want to go. Bell Canada. I mean, that's, that's where I want to spend my money anyway. So, that's good. Uh, this thing. Need a percentage on that. Alright. Alright. Yep, that's what we're going to do. All right, so we're going to uh, sell for profit XL Energy. Uh, we're going to pair it all the way back to 14 shares. So we'll sell something like 37 shares, something like that. Uh, put some cash in our pocket, and then we will purchase uh, Bell Canada. Now, whether or not I'm going to go go all in at 64 shares uh i doubt it but um uh, i will play with the math and see um what works out better um i know if i double it to 16 um that'll get me down to probably about four let me see 47 plus 43 is 90 that'll get me down to 45 um if i triple it um it'll get me a little lower so i don't know uh right now uh Bell Canada I believe is at um is at like forty three. Let's see. Yeah, it's at forty three. So you know, closer I can get to forty three the better. Forty five is not bad, but you know, if I can spend a little extra cash and, and get closer to forty three, I think uh that's the way to go. All right, I think that's it. This was not as long as I thought it would be uh, this time. Have any questions, concerns, don't hesitate to call, text, or uh, put a comment in the uh, comment section. Uh,